Hi folks, Irish Trekkie just stopping by to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our sponsors, Starfleet International. Starfleet International is the world's largest and oldest Star Trek fan association, providing a place where Star Trek fans can meet up, get to know each other, have fun and share in their love of Star Trek. I'm a member over here in Ireland in Region 20, so why not help out the channel, jump down to the description box and head over and let them know that Irish Trekkie sent you. And maybe we can meet up for one of their fantastic events. Hi folks, Irish Trekkie, back with our Star Trek, the official Starships Collection issue review. This time we have issue 95, New Orleans class, USS Kyushu. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Anyway, we have quite a sizable model here. Let's put this to one side and let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? Here we have the front graphic, which is looking very nice, if I do say so myself. We have a frigate class, launched 24th century, length 340 meters, with a max speed of warp 9.3. So we have our four sections, the New Orleans class, designing the ship, Michael Piller on the best of both worlds, and on-screen appearances. So very distinctive kitbash kind of ship going on here. A uh, nice profile shot though. Um, additional information, we have a crew 500. Uh, weaponry are phaser emitters, torpedoes, and it's captained by Ricks. And some nice close-up shots here as well. We can definitely see the lineage of this ship. And then we have some mounting instructions over here also. Now another fantastic CG shot here just inside the cover. Uh, the New Orleans class vessels were like Galaxy class ships in both appearance and ability, but about half the size. The New Orleans class was a frigate and similar in design to the contemporary Galaxy class starship. The most obvious differences between the ship was that the New Orleans class featured an additional pod on the underside of the secondary hull. An additional one, well, the Galaxy didn't have the other two either, so additional pods all over the bloody ship. <laughs> Captain Ricks was in command of the New Orleans class USS Thomas Paine, uh, NCC 65530 in 2364. Ricks was a Bolian and considered to be one of Starfleet's most accomplished captains at the time. According to records, the Thomas Paine was on a diplomatic mission to Epsilon Ashanti 3 in 2367 and to Alderaan in 2368. So if he was the captain of the Thomas Paine, why was he down as being captain of the Kyushu? Was he captain of the Kyushu also? I have to check that. So again, there wasn't a lot of shots, hence all these new CGI renders here, which is no problem. The drifting wreckage of the New Orleans class USS Kyushu was evidence of the carnage at the Battle of Wolf 359 when a single Borg cube destroyed 39 Starfleet ships on its seemingly inexorable way to Earth. So yeah, like, I could never understand the power of that one Borg cube. It was absolutely hugely destructive until we get to, like, the very... I know there's the whole dr dramaticism about it as well, but um, I must actually go back, because I haven't, I haven't watched TNG in a long time. Um, I've recently rewatched the original series the remastered version and the animated series and also enterprise so i'm working my way through the joy that is netflix at the moment <laughs> so my text is kind of blurry on some of my pages here and it's not the most crumple free magazine i must admit um so here we have the ship profile nice looking ship and um, you can see the difference in scale with the size of the windows um, so we have the main impulse, warp nacelles, uh, these are the dorsal pod and ventral pod. Uh, main bridge, uh, four torpedoes. Um, doo -doo -doo. The surface of the hull incorporated hundreds of life hatches, lifeboat hatches. Behind them were escape pods and each one could sustain an occupant of up to 86 people. So if there was hundreds of them, why so many for a crew of 500? Anyway, is there anything else interesting here? Do, 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 do. Um, the New Orleans class USS Kyushu was named after one of the four main islands of Japan. It was also a reference to Deep Space Nine opening episode Emissary, but the line was later cut. Ooh, interesting. So it's a nice looking ship though, isn't it? Something different. I'm not a big fan of kitbash ships a lot of the time. We saw these pictures from Rick 
way back when on Facebook. Nice to see them in the magazine here. Um, and nicely arranged actually as well. And very well shot. Fair play. So the New Orleans class, one of the rarest Starfleet ships um, was built <laughs> as part of the attempt to create a budget starship and a prototype only just made it to screen. One of the rarest Starfleet ships was built as part of an attempt to create a budget starship and the prototype only just made it to screen. You can see the um, damage nature of it. Uh, the study model of the New Orleans class uses Kyushu, made a single appearance uh, in the debris field that Enterprise D encountered at the aftermath of Battle Wolf 359. The model was permanently damaged by Okuda and Sternbeck, who used a Dremel to remove parts of it before applying paint damage. <laughs> so it was designed to be destroyed. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame itself. But it is quite a rare ship. So Michael Piller, best of both worlds. What an absolute amazing bit of Star Trek, in all fairness. We have some nice shots here. Mega Cube. In all fairness, it was great storytelling and very dramatic and full of adventure at the same time. I won't kind of go through a huge amount of that. I'll leave that for you guys to read, but you can pause on it. Maybe you can uh, make it out. So anyway, um, first appearance, Best of Both Worlds, Part 2, and TV appearance, Star Trek The Next Generation. And look out for issue 96, we have the Orion Scout Ship as well, which is going to be interesting another revisit to toss um another revisit to the original series remastered edition so let me close out on the magazine and let's have a look at this model shall we so let's take her out of her box and have a look at her hair so my base is 7906a a with the mount at the aft and slightly articulated up as well so it should be interesting to see what that looks like let's put this to one side and let's have a look at the ship shall we so here we have the Kyushu, NCC 65491, in all her kitbashy glory. The rare Starfleet ship that is, it's actually quite big. Bigger than I thought it would be. Um, nice detailing on the registry there, the red pinstriping. We have some light Azteking there with windows that, they look okay. They're mildly moulded. Some misalignments, but nothing too crazy actually. Nice detailing there on the bridge. And you can actually see there's some very, very fine pinstriping just on those pods as well, just around here, which is actually quite cool. Going down into the impulse, it's painted on. But then we have our pinstriping going down into the dry section there as well, which looks very neat. And some very fine detailing. And the pylons there as well. So the registry and the kaishu. Nasans, we have plastic. Very reminiscent of the Enterprise D. Plastic bazaars, plastic inserts as well, which is nice. With the detailing as taking going down the body of it. Nice bold graphics there as well. Ventral section, we have the additional pod. Phaser strips look very, very nice. The deflector dish, hard to get that with the in light, actually not too bad there. Some nice detailing actually on the inside of that deflector. Very nice actually, surprised me. Interesting dry section isn't it? <laughs> it's almost like the older style ships. And then we have our ventral pod as well. So you can see the way it's mounted on our highlighters. And just a bit of a note, a little bit of a seam there. No plastic, just painted on. Which is no big problem. Same on our dorsal pods there as well, which are pretty aligned. A little bit wobbly, but nothing too, too crazy. It's more of a kind of um, a soft brown colour. More of a kind of movie theme colour. I don't know if it's a little bit off colour looking at the some of the renders. It was a bit more blue, a bit more duck egg. But I'll allow it. I'm not too crazy with that though. <laughs> There's some nice moulding on the pylons there as well. Everything is actually pretty sharp. Nav lights, 
more de decals there. Some pinstriping accents for the impulse. Very nice. Very happy with that actually. Very happy with that indeed. So let's have a look at it on the stand and uh, let's get a little bit closer to it as well. So it just sits on the pylons there. Just be careful putting them in. It was a bit tight. I was worried about scratching it. But it actually looks very, very cool on that stand, doesn't it? I like it a lot. This is actually a very, very nice ship. It's sizable, which I really like. And uh, that affords a lot of detailing and some great additions like the plastic nacelles, pinstriping. Um, and all that as well. So I'm very happy and I think that's a very successful Federation ship. And yes, I am a Federation fanboy, but um, some of the alien ships in this collection have been absolutely fantastic. But um, this was a bit surprising to me. It wasn't a ship that I knew a huge amount about, in all fairness to you. Um, but I'm actually very happy that I now have it in my possession. Um, so let's compare it to a ship in the line, just to get a sense of scale. And uh, we go from there. So, dusted off the USS Enterprise NCC-1701, which predates this by 94 issues. It's crazy. This is where it all started. But I decided to get this ship because, again, the Kyushu owes a lot in overall design. So you can see the parts weren't used. They're completely different. Um, you can see the different scaling in the bridge versus the Enterprise bridge. The nacelle design is there, but they're more elongated. They're narrower. The dry section is there, but again, it's different as well. Complete kit bash, which is nice. But some of the honorary, you know, the impulse drive, the ringed um, phaser banks, the windows, the uh, escape pods, they're all there to pay tribute to the Galaxy. So again, frigate, similar to the Galaxy, but only half of the size. So interesting little model as i said um but i think very successful i would give that top max for my version no damage no blemishes that i could see from the initial first look that i just gave so let me know in the comments below what you thought and stay tuned for the orion scout ship that should be coming to an irish trekkie youtube channel near you very soon i've been your local irish trekkie and i will see you in the next video take it easy and goodbye yeah.